Hey guys, I'm the one you lost, and in this video I'm going to show you how to render back muscles that are toned and very pretty looking. So first things first, we need to explain the pieces. First off, we have the trapezius, which is the part of that you see in the bodybuilders, especially swimmers, where they have kind of that thick neck. The next thing we need to look out for is the lat, which is this big area of the back right here. Then we have teres minor and teres major. Now. I don't know how to pronounce this one right here, so I'm just gonna circle it for you, but this is also important. These are the major groups that are gonna make your back look correct. So now let's look at an actual example of it. We have this uh, image that I found on Google. I will leave a link to it. So what we have here is we have all the muscle groups being pushed into her back. My version is with all the muscles pointed in toward the chest. So I'll have to explain that a bit. And we actually are looking for some exaggeration here. We're looking for toned and nice. That isn't always what we get, but it's what we want. So let's get an example of something that's exaggerated. So here we have a Jojo pose. Now, as we can see, the back muscles and the shoulders and all the muscles are greatly exaggerated. They're not actually fully atomically correct, but that doesn't matter. As long as we're in the ballpark is what we're going for. The fantastic thing about anime is we're not always going for realism. We're going for something that looks close to reality, but has a little bit of that exaggerated anime-esque look. So I'll be pointing out what I'm doing as we go along. And what we have here is right now we have the bareback base colors. And I'm going to show you slowly here pretty soon how we're going to take that and extend it way farther. So we're going to start our rendering soon. And the way I did it, I was actually with a multiply layer. So we are starting to slowly block out the shapes for the, um, the back muscles. Now I usually start with the, um, the terrace minor and major and a little bit of the arm to kind of get it right, if that makes sense. You will notice that I'm definitely thinking before I do anything. What we're gonna do is we're slowly going to create a curve here and we are going to make the, uh, the, the lats and a little bit of the trapezius, which comes down from the neck. So here we go. We're going to have to be very careful and we're going to slowly start outlining it. So we're just going to follow the shapes and kind of match what we see. It's good to have in the reference. It's why I have this reference right in front of you to kind of show you what I'm doing. Now, whenever we are going for this uh, soft shaded look, we are going to be using the blend brush a whole lot. I use what's known as the blur brush. It's a basic setting in Clip Studio Paint. You probably have a version of it in whatever software you use. So it's super important whenever you start blocking out the shapes to focus on very rugged, jagged shapes. The reason we are doing that is because it plans things out a bit more. We are gonna blend the places where the light starts to slowly fade out. There's gonna be hard shadows and there's gonna be soft shadows. The soft shadows appear whenever we have light slowly rounding off. So the rounder the object or the part of the back muscle is, the more it blends. Whereas if it's a deep cut, like where the lats and the trapezes meet, we will get um, more jagged edges. So right now, like I said, we're just blocking out the shapes, trying to get it to look correct. And it really is a lot of trial and error. Now we're kind of marking it over to the arm here. And if we look very closely, you can see what I'm trying to convey. It may be hard to visualize at the moment, but I'm creating that little divot in the trapezius and the lat and where the spine meets. So, as you can see, I wasn't quite satisfied with how the, the lat was coming down, so I wanted to kind of straighten it out and make it look a bit more anatomically correct. And as I keep saying, we are looking for something in the ballpark. It doesn't have to be perfect because that's the great part about art. As long as it's somewhere within the scope of reality, then it's correct. It's why I use the Jojo example. Jojo is greatly exaggerated, but it feels right, if that makes sense. You can also say the same thing about Dragon Ball Z, especially the Super Saiyan 2 variant that Vegeta and Trunks had, where they got real bulky, but it wasn't practical.
Also, if you've been watching my videos, you know what's known as the Terminator line that I talk about. It's where, where light is about to touch the character, there is a hard kind of gradient shadow. What I did to achieve that with this artwork was I used a darker color, I locked the transparency of the shading layer, and then I airbrushed it over the top. And that gives kind of this cool, nice gradient effect that looks very pleasing. So we're gonna take that further and where the, the, um, the lat bend, I'm gonna erase part of it to kind of create this gradient that defines it even more. As you can start to see, it's starting to look like a back. It's starting to look correct. It still has a long way to go. In fact, here pretty soon, we're gonna start adding um, a lighter shadow on top of everything. So now we're gonna be adding the lighter color in between where it meets here. And what this does is this blocks out and makes it look like it's three dimensional. If you'll notice, if we think of this almost like a cube or a polygon, our goal is to create that third dimension. It's not perfectly flat or perfectly curved. This is where that JoJo reference comes into play. A little added depth. As you can see, it's starting to really come alive now. And this was all done without a reference. This is mainly me just kind of adding the blockiness and making it look more, more uh, defined and a lot better colors. So here you'll notice I start to think, yeah, this looks okay, but I'm having a bit of a issue with the color. I don't think it's saturated enough. So I add a little bit of saturation, hitting control U and changing the hue and saturation and adding a little more color to it. I then add a blue underneath the shadows. As you can see, I'm adjusting the colors a bit here to kind of make sure it fits that really nice look that I'm going through. I'm also adjusting the opacity again by locking transparency and using the airbrush as an eraser by pressing the C key on my keyboard. Now we're just doing the face, which isn't anything fancy. It's just a basic hard light on the side of the head and a gradient on the face. Nothing too insane. I probably could have done a little bit better on the face this time, but hey, it happens. So we're gonna jump ahead here. Now we have the basic render, but I wanna add even more dramatic lighting to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a multiply layer on top of the whole artwork, and we're gonna start light carving to really bring everything home. See how moody it looks already? Change the saturation to get it kind of right, get it nice and vivid. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the, the shading layer on the character, and we're just gonna kind of erase and bring some of the light back to the back. So it's, it's a matter of slowly adding it back and getting it just right. Don't, don't add too much, don't add too little. It'll come down to taste what you think looks best. What I think looks best and what you think looks best might be totally different, but neither one is incorrect. So now we're gonna start to add some add glow, which is my personal technique of how I bring lighting back to my artwork and kind of make it shine a bit more. I'm doing little adjustments here, nothing too crazy. So here pretty soon we're gonna start adding all that extra stuff that's gonna make it look really nice. As you can see, I use kind of a, a reddish orange on the add glow, and my settings for my airbrush are very light, and I use a gentle touch to get it to kind of pop a bit. Just kind of adjusting as I go, trying to make it look correct. So now we're skipping ahead a bit, and we're gonna start going into the post-processing, which is, what I always say, it brings your artwork to life, post-processing. I really, really recommend you watch my video on my tutorial on post-processing. I might have to make a whole separate playlist to make it easier for people to find, 
but it'll definitely help more. Uh, here, we'll add some tonal curve to kind of bring out the colors that I want. And you can see it's already starting to look really, really nice. That That's subjective. If you don't like it, you don't like it. It's fine. Um, we are going to start adding some hard light. Kind of add some more, add glow everywhere to kind of make it just pop a bit more. So this is uh, what's known as... So I'm coloring the line art by duplicating the colors, putting it on top, clipping transparency over the line art, blurring it, then increasing the saturation, lowering the the, uh, the brightness, and that kind of colors our line art for us. The technique I really enjoy using. So we add some level curve, kind of make things more correct in the tone and the levels. And that's kind of our end goal. And here we go. Here's our finished render on the back. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Helps out a whole lot. I hope to make more tutorials for you soon. And I'll see you next time. Bye.